Welcome, welcome to the smallest channel with the biggest heart. The People's Channel, Orchids for Dummies. <laughs> now, Foul Pals, in today's video, we are briefly going to talk about the roots of a Phalaenopsis orchid. We are going to talk about whether or not we should pre-soak our media, okay, before we add fertilization to it. Stay tuned, please. Okay, so, Foul Pals, many of you new beginners may be asking yourself, should I pre-soak my media before adding fertilization to it? Now, my dear Foul Pal Maxine, she wanted to know if she let her orchids dry out, okay? She says she likes to give them a day or two to dry out before she likes to water. So she wants to know, does she have to wet the roots before she adds her fertilized water to it? Now, Foul Pals, you know here on Orchids for Dummies, we are going to break it all the way down. So, I don't want to give a quick answer to something that could be complicated to someone that, you know, is thinking that we're talking about something completely different. So, first and foremost, Foul Pals, here in the orchid community, especially the American Orchid Society, we believe in fertilizing our orchids with a weak dosage, okay? So that is also something that you guys may be wondering. Well, should I, you know, sh even if it's a low, a low feed, do I still have to pre-soak my media before adding fertilization to it if I like to let my Phalaenopsis orchids dry out before I actually feed them, okay? So, with a weak dosage, absolutely not. You do not have to pre-soak your Phalaenopsis orchids before you feed it, okay? Especially if you are using rainwater. A lot of us like to ration our rainwater because sometimes we can have dry seasons and we can have wet seasons, with this being the new year, 2020, I would like you guys to first ask yourself, do you want this to be a dry season for you? Or do you want to make some change, positive change into your life by having a wet season? Okay? So, I'm sorry, you guys know here on Orchids for Dummies, the people's channel, honey. We like to give you a little spiritual food as well. But no, um, dear Foul Pals, if you're using a weak dosage, um, weekly, weekly, like the American Orchid Society say, you would not have to um, wet your media before you add your fertilization. Now, keep in mind, now we are going to talk about orchids that you actually um, would want to do that with. This right here is a Phalaenopsis orchid that is recovering, okay? This is a um, Phalaenopsis that was on death's door and now is making a comeback with very active growth. This Phalaenopsis orchid does need fertilization. She will need some food now, okay? Especially with these aerial roots. But what I want you guys to understand is if you look at this pot right here, it is full of Spagna moss, okay? Now, Foul Pals, when it pertains to orchids that is in 100% Spagna moss, that is a orchid that you would want to pre-soak before you feed. However, like I told my dear Foul Pal Maxine, if you're using a weak dosage, then go ahead, do it, you will be fine. But our heavy feeders, new beginners, who is fertilizing their orchids with cow mag, with Epsom salts, with 20, 20, 20, all of that stuff right there. Remembering, if you don't have a strong knowledge of what these fertilizations does to your orchids, how it supplements it, and when and how to apply it efficiently, then Foul Pals, please use a weak dosage. Now, me, on the other hand, I did that all last year. Now, I want to bump it up with my orchids, okay? Starting with my tester orchids. 
But this Phalaenopsis right here, with it being in complete sphagnum moss, the moss does wear out or it does disintegrate quickly or more quickly than your orchid that is in complete bark. So keeping that in mind, seeing that this sphagnum is now brown, that's an indication that this sphagnum needs to be replaced very soon. This is sphagnum moss that I do not want to continue add fertilization to it because now what it is going to do, if you guys did not see it, it is now going to start accumulating salts. That white substance down there is sphagnum moss that is um, exuberating the salts, okay? Exuding from excess in the sphagnum media, okay? So now I don't want to keep adding more and more fertilization to it. What I want to do when I do feed it is rinse it out with pure rain water. Never ever using um, tap water, okay? Not using tap water on sphagnum moss that has already disintegrated to that uh, point right there. Now, when you have your Phalaenopsis orchids, and I'm sorry for being so long-winded, but orchids for dummies! <laughs> Breaking it all the way down! When you have your Phalaenopsis that is in a mark, a bark mixture, um, anything over 70% bark, no, I'm going to go ahead and just say it like this. If you have your bark, it's pre predominantly bark, but you might have a layer of sphagnum moss on top of it, something that you can accessibly pull off and redo, okay? That is something that you will not have that problem with at all, Okay. Now, when you have a Phalaenopsis orchid that is in a 50-50, okay, or has excess sphagnum moss mixed all the way in it, yes, God, honey, do not start doing all that fertilization, even if you're doing your weekly, weekly. Keep in mind that um, that sphagnum moss is going to accumulate salts and it's also going to break down a lot faster than um, your bark. Your sphagnum moss is going to break down a lot faster than your bark, okay? So all in all, it will make your pot still acidic. To keep in mind that your Phalaenopsis orchids that are healthy, established in the pot, but still growing new roots. When you have new roots this size right here, anything less than an inch, is going to be too sensitive for your Phalaenopsis orchids. So keep in mind, if you do have a layer of moss on top, if that moss gets too acidic, what it's going to do is burn, okay? It's going to burn that root and it's going to give a salt buildup appearance on your roots by having a white appearance instead of silver and also brown, okay? Now, that is indication of root burn. Now, Foul Pals closing, keep in mind that especially small root burn like this will not affect your orchid. Just keep it in mind that when you do have that new root production, you want to make sure that you have a good pH inside of your pot. Here on Orchids for Dummies, this year we will be talking about pH even more. We will be talking about how to test the acidity of your pots. We will also talk about how to flush your pots properly, starting with how to repot a Phalaenopsis orchids. So please, Foul Pals, keep, keep, keep ringing that bell so you will be notified of all of my new videos. Remembering on Mondays, I go live with a motivational topic. On Thursday, we have Bible study. Please join my Facebook group called Foul Pal. On Facebook, I will leave a link below. I love you guys so much. Until next time.